Hey, it's Joe Glass, me Automator, and this is what we automated this week. Again, this was a really heavy week of doing uh, client work. Oops, wrong one. Let me launch Prompt Assistant here. Get the Automator. Oh, yeah, I changed the order, so here we go. Recently modified. This is going to scan my S drive and look for things modified in the last week. It looks like there's 57 files. Um, this first one, it, it's, yeah, zero bytes. It, we were, we were, we're building a tool that loops across all of our YouTube videos, gets all the subtitles, puts them into a YouTube search. And it's really complicated because we need to um, update it. And I said, you know, we're going to have to have this as a subscription at some point. But one of the hero members asked about getting access to it. And I said, yeah, I, I can, you know, I can give them a static shot of it, which has over, there's, what, over 1,400 videos right now? And it has all the subtitles. So when you start searching, it pulls up the videos it's in and the timestamps. You can jump to it. So it's really cool. But um, I said, yeah, I could give you access to that. But I'm like, hey, we have, and I figured how many, like 200 and let's say 30-ish hours of hero content that because those videos are unlisted, those aren't in the list of the 1,400 I mentioned. So um, that's 230 hours of stuff where they've been in calls and they might want to jump to a video they were um, at present at a meeting on, uh, but use the subtitles to be able to find that timestamp. So I had to get a list of the, um, the unique IDs of those hero calls. And so of course I can't share any of that because if you had the ID, you could go watch a video and that's just part of the hero group. But what I did, because Irfan was like, oh yeah, I can use Refidium and I'll go scrape it. And I'm like, you know what? What I did was I went into um, the YouTube list and I used Chrome to select and copy and paste to Excel. And then in Excel, I used this function here to just say, hey, look into that um, cell that has a hyperlink because there's no easy way to get a hyperlink out of um, a, a cell. There is a formula for it, but you have to look that up. Anyway, I had an example there, so I just did that. So that's what that one is. The daylight savings, we have reminders for the um, the hero calls. And because our time changed, it they were an hour off. And I'm like, hey, we need to update this. to. So we checked to see, and yes, there is a value on your computer that, do, that will tell you whether you have changed with the daylight savings or not. But what we realized was what actually matters is because hero members are all around the world, has it changed for me, not for everybody. So they, if they run that tool on their end, if it doesn't change for them, it would give them the wrong time because it matters if it's changed for where we are because that's what it bases off of whether in the U.S., whether we change times or not. So instead of actually creating a complicated one that would use probably an API to look up the time change in Dallas and see if it's changed, that way anyone that runs it could detect this, what we did was said... Uh, Let's just create a variable at the top of the script. It says whether central daylight saving time is in effect or not, and then just change it and just tell people, hey, set this to a one or a zero, depending on if, you know, the time of year. So it was a quick fix. It's not the perfect solution, but, you know, sometimes that's the best way to do it. This foot pedal, I did a video on it during the week of how easy it is to, to let me open that script. So here we go. This is what's in that file. Um, if the browser back, no, is pressed, blah, blah, blah. That's, yeah, this is still nothing. Oh, I was sending the F14 there. Uh, but here, if the F14 button is pressed and a an H, but that's I, what I did was I set it to my foot pedal. So I just pushed down the foot pedal and then hit H. Oh, it's not, huh, it's not running. Let me launch it first, duh. So I'm going to push down and hit H. Let me come, I've been having a problem with Studio actually launching it. And this is a V2 script, and that's probably why. It's a V2 script. This is my version of, of Studio that runs V1. Um, so now let me hold down this and hit H. There we go, here's the message box world. So it, look, I could even do this. Let's, uh, let's change it to say if F14, oops, too many, save, and reload it. Now, now I'm gonna have my hands up. Hey, check me out hit my hotkey, which is my foot pedal, right? So that, because I've remapped that foot pedal to be F14 key, and I just send it when it's clicked. But um, I also show how you can actually get the status of whether if you use it with modifier keys or whatnot. So it can be another way to add an extension modifier, which is really, really cool. All right, so let's keep going in our list. Hero video summary. This one, it's a really complicated script that we, we made a couple tweaks to, but... We summarize the hero videos and our other videos too. You'll see them. Often those summaries are more than 5,000 characters and YouTube can only take the first 5,000. So we trim out extra stuff, 
um, I'm, I'm skipping over some of the, the important parts, but uh, we, we trim it down to where I can push some of it into the description. And then on our hero content page, we have the full version with timestamps to jump around. Um, so it's not all the subtitles, it's just cliff notes using an AI tool to go build that. So that's that. Clipboard history, this this tool, um, it's pretty cool. You can monitor what was in your clipboard and auto-suggesting, so when you start typing, uh, that's now on the automator. We made some minor tweaks to that, but it's, it's going pretty good now. These are other files associated with that. Here's the auto-suggestion, which is very similar. The difference being, instead of monitoring your clipboard, you give it files of text and say, this is what I want to have in here for my auto-suggestions to take place. So that's really cool. This device mute, this one's really cool. As Ace and I just did a video on it the other day, you can have, assign a hotkey to a certain microphone um, and to your speakers and so you can, and to both. So you can hit a hotkey and either kill your microphone and the speakers at the same time. You can kill the microphone or the speakers or both. Um, it's really cool. And we realized when we're on a call with our clients and they need to get work done and they don't want to listen to his Ace and I debugging something, that they can mute their speakers on their end and their microphone so we don't listen to them. But because we're remoting into their computer, we can unmute our speakers and talk to him and say, hey, we have a question with you about this one thing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's those. We use we used UIA um, to update it. It's it's pretty cool. Go check out the video on the device mute. We, uh, we are pulling up the microphone and then we highlight what to look for. So it was a really cool way to use UIA. Um, Dropbox link getter. This just, we have, um, we use the S drive. We, we created an S drive, which gets, um, it puts all of our stuff across the automator. It's all in Dropbox. And then Isaiah and Irfan and Rizwan all have an S drive. All the paths are identical. The problem is when you have an S drive, let me just show you. It's easier to say. So I'll, I'll, I'll just open it here. So in here, if I right click on this, there is no Dropbox link. That's because this is the S drive. And so I don't actually use this tool myself. So F1 um, or F2. So I'm gonna run it now. So let me see if I can hit the, the browser back. That just got the full path to that link instead of the S drive, which is basically like a mapped drive. So I need to borrow this tool and change it to a different hotkey so I can give that because sometimes I need to jump to that folder um, and file and get the... Actually, did it... Let me see something here. Let me run it again. No. So this gets us the path to it. But what... Um, I don't actually want the, the full path. What I want is the hyperlink. And I don't think that was in there. Um, get, oh, F1. Let, let's try Control F1, which... Yeah, I would never use that hotkey. Control F1. So now that Dropbox link is copied, and if I paste it, yeah, that is the shareable link. So that was the main purpose of the tool, is to get that hyperlink that we can then post like to the client or whatever, and I don't have to navigate to the actual real drive where that's located. So um, yeah, that's that script. I'm not sure why I think Irfan made an update on that. Um, this video reducer now, someone wrote me and they're like, hey, um, let, me, let me go ahead and launch it. Oh no, that's that's the wrong one. Um, there's the concatenator. The reducer we've talked about before, it's kind of like Handbrake, but it's much, much simpler. Works very fast, very cool. We're almost ready to release that. Um, the problem is getting it, setting the path, and if you're not an admin, we need to be able to figure out how to work that one out. Also, this this class, um, FFmpeg, when it updated, they changed how the, out, the standard out works, or what they're dumping into it, and so now our progress bar no longer works properly, so we're gonna have to figure that one out. Uh, the mp3 ripper metadata remover we added licenses to all these things um, we just haven't finished it video merger this is the one i was thinking of was someone wrote me and um and i'm not sure why it's not working for him I, i'm still waiting for to hear back but when you come into here where are we video merger i don't oh because we're actually playing with these merging files um where's my script here it is so this comes up and then you can just drag um a couple files and hit merge it's going to ask you what do you want to call it let's put that on the other screen Let me, um, it does its stuff in what was that like in a second it um it creates a merged video 
merged video. Now it's 14 minutes and 50 seconds. If I had looked at the time, you'd see. But um, it, it does it crazy fast. And it takes the order. We don't have a way to mer move the order of them, so you got to drag them in the order you want them. But that it, it works really, really fast. So and, and for some reason, the guy that I you know created it for, it's not working for him. And I'm waiting to hear back of like, he just says it doesn't work. But I'm like, okay, that unfortunately doesn't help me much. I, I need more information. Uh, anyway, so let's see. Flexifinder. This one is Ace and I. We've, we've been looking at it, and Rizwan's been working on it, but some of the... It works. Here's the thing. It works. Rizwan is, is you know, still learning auto hockey and new to GUIs, and we noticed there were some things in there that that we weren't loving what we saw, um, and so we need to talk to him. Um, let me just run it. It does work, though. Uh, you can do searches across things. We have a preference center where you can say, I want dark mode. You can change these if you want to. Um, it's pretty cool. It was how it was built was we had some things that we, we you know, it's anytime we share our stuff, even though it works, it needs to, you know, be people expect a certain level of things, right? And they want to often learn from them. And so there's some things in there that we want to take care of. Yeah, so we're, we didn't quite release one yet, even though it works. Um, it's, we, we needed some cleanup done on it first. Um, and it's no fault of uh, Rizwan. The thing, I think what happened was he added to it and then he later changed some stuff and added to it, but he didn't remove the old functionality. And that's where we need to talk to him about, hey, if you change how you're approaching a solution, you need to remove the, the older version of stuff. You don't just keep adding to it and leave stuff in, right? So yeah, so that's that one. VS Hotkey, which actually this is the other one. Irfan, I think, fixed it. Uh, Isaias, so we create a backup of your auto hotkey, um, hotkeys, not, not auto hotkey, excuse me. If you're using VS Code and you run the Get Active Path tool, we will create a backup of your uh, JSON file that stores your hotkeys instead of just replacing it. Because Isaias mentioned that he actually lost his and he had them backed up, but now we back them up. But it, uh, it creates a backup before we append ours to it, which uses like an F15 key or something. So something no one else uses. Um, so, so it just adds a new hotkey to make it easy. Um, the font list. So we're working on these. They're pretty cool. In what tool was it? Oh, our, we have this new banner tool we're working on, which should be below here somewhere. And it, um, we wanted a list of fonts. And so we were working through how to get a list of installed fonts. Now in V1, W and I... Uh, can get a list of installed fonts, but converting the WMI to the V2 library, even as Ace looked at it, he's like, it's it's not quite obvious how to do it. So we asked ChatGPT a bit, and then we, we found a fonts folder, and so we were looping over that, and, and we're getting close, but it'll basically have a nice list of, of fonts because um, people need to be able to, resize, to get a different font. This resizable GUI, I just released a video on this the other day, but it's a great easy way to have a function to call to have a resizable GUI that uh, has different colors. You can change the background colors or the font color or the font size. It's also resizable. Um, lots of great things in here. You can make the text bold or not. Lots of cool stuff. But it's very simple instead of creating a GUI every time, right? So it's very easy to dump some text to. Um, prompt Assistant just today. Isaias was making updates of that. Um, and there's still some weird tweaks that we're seeing with it right now that he's going to have to fix tomorrow at some point. But as I said, we've been really busy with client work, so it's making it hard. Um, here's our screen banner. This is the one I was talking about. Um, I don't know what screen banner example one. Let's see. I don't. I'm not sure. So right now, here's the GUI for it. But what? Let's see. So here are the hotkeys, and and we're we're getting closer. Let's hit apply and see what it does. Oh, well, it should have put it on the screen somewhere. Um, I'm not seeing it, so who knows what just happened there. But um, what it's going to be is, like, often when I'm in OBS, I put a banner over my head, or later in post-production, you'll see me put the URLs up on the screen. I was thinking about it. I'm like, why don't we just create a script that will display that? If we're sharing the screen, it will pop it up on the screen, and then we don't have to do it in post-production. It just saves us time. Instead of having to go edit it later, we just do it live. Because often, like in a hero calls, um, and even client calls, we're doing work with the clients, and Isaias is talking, and what I was thinking is, I'll run this tool, tool on my computer. It will update a file in Dropbox, which is going to update on his screen, so his screen will show the display. 
So he doesn't have to be thinking about, well, gee, what was the URL? Let me go find that. I'll be doing that, and so he can focus on what he's doing. So it's, it's going to be a cool script. And, again, save us time in post-production where we don't have to go add those things because those things take time. Um, remote screen. Ba oh, here's... No, I don't know if that's different from the other one, but, um, yeah, let's save that for next week. Getting Here's one getting the fonts. All right, so yeah, getting the fonts, um, set queue. That was where in that script, if you saw, let's go. Actually, let's let's go ahead and launch this one. Let's see what it does here. Oh, that's the folder. Remote screen banner. Um, this text up here. Notice how there's text there, but if I start typing, it disappears. Yet if I delete it, that shows up. That's the queue. And so, initially, this edit field was way over longer like out to here because over here to the left of it it said text for banner this was like this this label so imagine i'm just gonna grab this this being here actually I, duh, that was stupid i could have done this so this text for banner being here and then this edit field because it was longer was um it was even longer right it came out to here and it looked really awkward and so with rizwan i said hey why don't you just fill this with the queue, and that way we don't have to have um, it wider, and it basically makes where a decent GUI, because otherwise these need to get stacked or something. So, then with the other one, which by the way, I was talking to him about using mockups, which is a website that Irfan and Isaiah and them use for creating GUIs very quickly in, in your layout. Um, and I know there's a, an auto hotkey script for creating GUIs, but in, in Tab Nation, you know, he's re I've seen several videos where he refers to them. Personally, I, I think you're shooting yourself in the foot because it creates static GUIs, which you, you I can't think of a time where we've created a GUI and like, oh, look, it's perfect. Because usually after you create it, you end up moving stuff around. Well, that's when it becomes a nightmare when it's been created with one of those tools. And theoretically, you could use that tool for just creating a layout and then building it in with... Uh, relational type things, but you know it would take so much more updating to do that. That um, Isaiah agrees too. Like just just do them from scratch. Um, so that mockups website. But what I was telling er, uh, Rizwan was, if you already have your script like this, just copy it, go into like Paint and do like I did here. Say, oh well, what if we moved these over here, right? And or these put these side by side. And this one was to go, you know. And, and I know it looks horrible. But it gives you the general idea. Then you're like, oh, this is how... Now, granted, it looks like crap, right? But it's a very quick way. If you have the elements, you don't have to go into a tool to go create them. That That's a time waste. Just move them around. Grab them by pieces and move them around. But if you don't have them, that's where the website mockups... And uh, it's in our GUIs course, too. Isaiah talks about it. But it... um. It makes it really easy, and I'll actually ask Isaiah at some point to do a video on how to use it. I don't think we've done one just as a regular video on YouTube, so maybe we'll go about uh, making a video for that. So, uh, But yeah, just a, a good thing to think through of like, never start building a GUI by writing code. It's a horrible, horrible approach. Um, our Telegram bot, this also was off an hour. Um, the text under mouse, this is a really, really cool one, and I think Irfan updated it, so... You can get the text under the mouse. Now, he, Irfan redid it in V2 using Descalada's library for getting the text with UIA. And holy cow, is it good. It's really, really good. So if you need to get your... Let's go ahead and open this here. Text under mouse. Oh, here's the executable. Let me see here. Because um, I, I don't know what the hotkey is. All right, so it's Control-Shift-B. Okay, that's a weird one, but all right. So Control-Shift-B... So see how it pulls it up and shows it here? It does highlight it also. So if I do it here, um, it's getting the text under mouse. I don't know what that was getting. You notice that's the text, and it shows what's highlighted. Let's go back to our tool. Uh, let's try it here. What, it's going to say cut. Oh, and here you notice it's saying unable to get it. I'm not Maybe I need to activate it first. Let's try that. No, for some reason, that's surprising. Oh, maybe because there was no text? So is they're just icons? Let's see if it gets it from here. Yeah, it's working pretty good. So yeah, it, it let's see if it'll even work for here. Yeah, like that's pretty cool. Um, it's also a great indicator of whether UIA will be able to automate that program because uh, that's how we're accessing it. So very, very cool script. Go check that out. 
Um, this to-do list, let me show you. Now, this is very early in the process. This is one I thought up, and uh, Irfan's been working on it. So I, I've never actually run it myself. So control home. So let's say control home. Well, apparently I broke it. All right. Well, we'll have to wait on that one. Um, and hopefully that, I think that's just a hotkey thing that he has to change. Uh, preference GUI. So this is the same thing. Weekly hero content. Uh, this is one of those really advanced scripts that goes and gets summarizes the stuff from the hero calls. Um, list of installed font. This is with WMI. We were trying to convert it to V2. You can see here. Uh, we were trying to convert it to V2, and unfortunately couldn't do it. Um, and this is uh, the Zoom. This is the one that actually everyone runs on their computer, not the Telegram version, but the one that all the hero members run on their computer. So, again, like I said, we didn't actually do a lot of scripts because we were doing a lot of client work. And our client work, for the most part, at least here, I didn't see any at the top. Um, this week, yeah. This week, um, the clients we're working with, we don't store their... We're doing the work on their computer, so they're not here locally. So... Yeah, um, that's basically it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you uh, did, please like the video. It really helps us out. And uh, don't forget, we, we offer great courses in auto hockey with a 200% money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. And hope to see you soon. Cheers.